everybody, it's Holly Nicole George, the Twister Sister, back with another Balloonpreneur Advice video just for you guys. Today we are going to be tackling the pricing question. What should you charge? How should you charge? And all that is coming up next. So I get questions about this topic all the time from all my wonderful newbies, which I love, who are coming into this business and they're confused, they're not sure how to price, how do you charge for balloons, what do we do? So let's talk about this. I'm gonna give you guys my experience and some practical tips that you can start using right away. So my number one piece of advice is to always charge for your time, if in at all possible. So there are a couple of instances where I would charge for your balloons, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but for the majority of your balloon twisting business, I highly, highly recommend that you charge for your time. So whatever your time is valued at for you, uh, that's what you wanna stick with. So for me, in my personal business, I charged by the hour. I know other twisters who have an hour and a half minimum. Some people have a two hour minimum. We always were like, well, whatever, we'll do one hour. So, uh, but our price was the same per hour. So it didn't matter how many hours they wanted to have us, our price was the same as per hour. We did have some wiggle room and I, of course, is my business, so I had discretion if I wanted to provide a discount for multiple hours, but I didn't post anything like that on my website. I didn't want it to be confusing. The simpler you can make things for your customers to understand, the more likely they are to go ahead and book with you. They don't want to spend 30 minutes on your website just trying to figure out how much it's gonna cost for them to have a balloon artist come to their one-year-old's birthday party. All right, these are moms who are busy. They've got little kids destroying their house while they're trying to plan the birthday party for them. They don't want this to be a difficult, long, drawn out, confusing process. So I always say, make your pricing as simple as possible. One simple price was what we did and it worked very well for us. I also highly recommend that you post that price, whatever it is, wherever people are finding your business. So if it's your website, I am a big fan of having your price posted loud and clear everywhere where people are looking for it. If you are only marketing your business on Facebook, make sure every now and then you post a post that has your services and prices listed so that people aren't wondering how much things are gonna cost them. Nobody likes to get on an awkward phone call with somebody just to be told a price that is way out of their budget and then they feel really weird and it's just an awkward experience for everybody. So people want to know the price before they call you. So do them that favor. Now, when it comes to figuring out what you should charge, I can't give you prices because I'm not gonna tell you what to charge. Every market and situation and service is different. And so you're gonna have to come up with that number on your own. But I will give you some ideas for other businesses you can look at to get an idea of sort of what the going rate is in your area. First thing I would check out would be local face painters. See what your face painters in your area are charging. That's gonna give you a good idea of what the clients in your area sort of expect for this type of service. Another good one to look at is character artists, if you have any of those around. Bounce house rental services can kind of give you some idea of what people are willing to pay for party entertainment as well. And if you have anything in your area that's like a party center, a place where people can go to have a birthday party, kind of look at what those guys are offering. Their services are gonna be different. They might provide food and a place to play. Um, but just get a kind of ballpark idea about what people are willing to spend for birthday parties and that will give you a good idea of what you could possibly charge for your services. And of course, if there's any other balloon twisters in your area, that is a dead giveaway. So make sure you do some Googling and networking to figure out what the other, other artists in your area are charging for their services and try to match or stick close to that general ballpark. 
Uh, you don't want to come into a market and then just drastically undercut everybody. That's a good way to not make a lot of friends. If you don't care about networking with the other artists in your area, that's one thing, but it's it's very valuable to be friends with the other entertainers in your area. So I would not recommend you undercutting people on purpose. Now I told you in the beginning of this video that there are some situations where I would charge per balloon. Now I'll give you one example that I think worked really well for my business and my client. So there was a festival, a church festival that they had every year in the fall and they wanted to have my services there, but as most church festivals go, um, they didn't really want to pay my full rate. So what we did that worked really well for us was I had the church pay me my full rate um, but then at the event, I collected tickets from everybody that wanted a balloon. Those tickets were all saved and given to the church at the end of the event so they could see how many tickets I collected. And that was kind of in their eyes, how much money they could deduct from my fee. Another way you could look at this is if a fair or festival wants to have you there, but they don't have a huge budget for you, uh, you can offer them to come to their fair for your full rate. And then you'll charge your the customers and guests per balloon and then all the money you make at the fair goes to the organizers of the fair and whatever you make will offset your cost for the fair organizers. So your fees may come out fully covered or they might even come out ahead a little bit, who knows. All you should really care about is that you're getting your full rate for the time that you're there. This is also a great suggestion to give to those clients who contact you about how big and busy their event is going to be and it's going to be a great marketing opportunity for you because there's going to be so many people there. Okay, let's test that out and put their word to the test and we'll just see. So you guys pay me my full rate and then if your clients that you're expecting to be there are really this good and this plentiful, then it should be no problem for them to make up for the cost of having me there by me charging per balloon. I hope that makes sense to you guys. This could be another tool you have in your toolkit for when people are asking you to work for free. And this could be another kind of opportunity to turn that free request into an actual paying gig, but also do it in a way that you don't just shut down the client, but you're actually working with them to find a solution on how you can have your services there and everybody also get what they need. So when I am charging per balloon, I talk specifically about that event I did every year that I would collect tickets from the guest and give those to the church at the end of the event. Um, it is helpful to have a sign. You're probably wondering how do I tell people how many tickets and all that. So what I did at that particular event is I would print out menus and at the top of my menus, I would just say four tickets five tickets, whatever it was gonna be. And so people knew easily, like these are all the things that are in the four ticket category. They could easily pick and choose what they wanted. If they only had one ticket to spend, then they could just look at the picture that had the one ticket at the top. And so it helped the lines move faster. It helped people know exactly what they could afford, what each different design was gonna cost them. And there was no like haggling or them coming up and wanting a giant mermaid, but they only had two tickets and now you just broke their heart by telling them that you can't do it for them. So I, you know guys, you guys know I am a huge fan of having menus and um, I actually printed this on magnetic paper. So if you didn't know that you could do that, you sure can with just your standard everyday printer from Walmart that I have. You can actually print on these magnetic sheets and I would put these on my big whiteboard that I would take to events and they just stick right on there. And so this was a really easy way for me to prepare for that event. And then I could reuse these same little menus for every type of event that was similar to that where I'd be working for tickets or dollars to pay the organizers back for having me there. Now, if you've never worked with a balloon menu at all before, I'd like to give you a free menu to start off with. It's my free starter menu. The link is gonna be in the description right below this video. You can print it out, take it to your event this weekend and see how much easier and more enjoyable your event is going to be when you start incorporating menus into your work. So grab that, it's completely free. Again, the link is in the description down below. Now I mentioned customers asking you to work for free in this video. If you want more information on 
on what to do in that situation. I've put together a video all about that topic and you can go check that out here. If you enjoyed these helpful hints and tips, and I hope that you did, let me know. Just pop that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed and that you ring the bell so you get notified when I put out a new video. I'll see you guys over in the next video. Until then, happy twisting. Bye.